On our broadcast tonight, breaking news as North Korea's leader gives what he calls final approval for a nuclear strike on the U.S. The defense secretary says the danger is now real and clear, and tonight we'll look at what it all means. Good evening. As the Associated Press put it tonight, the North Korean army is warning Washington that its military has been cleared to wage an attack using, quote, smaller and diversified nuclear weapons. Further, North Korea says its troops have been authorized to counter U.S. aggression. Today, the U.S. Defense Secretary said this danger is real and clear, and this is certainly another escalation as analysts here in this country try to figure out what this young North Korean leader is up to. We have two reports to start off tonight. Andrea Mitchell standing by in Washington. We want to begin with our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, in Seoul, South Korea. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Brian. As North Korea made what appears to be its most explicit threat so far, the United States said it is sending an advanced anti-ballistic missile system to Guam in the Pacific. Responsibility for what happens next, according to North Korea, sits with the United States. North Korea's military declared today it had, quote, final approval to launch merciless strikes on the United States, including the use of nuclear weapons, possibly within days. Just hours earlier, the Secretary of Defense criticized what he called North Korea's dangerous rhetoric. Some of the actions they've taken over the last few weeks um, uh, present a, a, a real and clear danger. We take those threats seriously. We have to take those threats uh, seriously. But can North Korea make good on its threats? U.S. officials tell NBC News they believe the North can put a nuclear weapon on a missile, that they have missile deliverable nukes, but not ones that could go more than a thousand miles and reach the United States or South Asia. But South Korea and U.S. forces there would be in range. And today, the North severed a crucial tie with the South, turning away trucks and workers from the Kaesong Industrial Park, a rare joint effort inside North Korea that until now had been allowed to continue. In Seoul, where people have tried to shug off the crisis, there are deep concerns. Polls say two-thirds of South Koreans want this country to have nuclear weapons. But that would spark an immediate crisis with the North and the risk of nuclear proliferation across Asia. Secretary of State Kerry, coming here next week, is already sending a message. The last thing the world needs is more nuclear uh, nations. But South Koreans worry about the new young leader in the North. Kim Jong-un undid years of diplomacy, vowing to reopen the Yongbyon nuclear reactor, capable of producing enough plutonium to make a nuclear bomb a year. North Korea closed it in 2007, even destroying a cooling tower to show its commitment to a now shattered deal with the U.S. If they restart their nuclear facility at Yongbyon, that is in direct violation of their uh, international obligations and would be a very serious step. But Kim Jong-un shows no sign that he's even listening to the outside world. North Korea is making it clear it has no intention of giving up its nuclear weapons. In fact, it wants to develop them. The question being asked here is how do you deter a nation that believes because of its nuclear arsenal, it doesn't need to compromise? It would be a mistake to dismiss Kim as a mere boy emperor stomping his feet. His country has been described as a giant cult, worshipping three generations of a single family for more than six decades. Kim Jong-un, his father, and his father. The ruling philosophy? Military first. An undefeatable military is essential. Rivals bent on its destruction must be opposed. People say North Korea is, is unpredictable. It's very predictable. It's very power-driven, um, exploit weaknesses, intolerant, uncompromising type of uh, view. North Korea lives on this philosophy and not much else. It's desperately poor. Famine ravages the countryside. The capital is a modern-looking city of more than three million. But look closer, fly over Pyongyang using Google Earth, and you see city streets 
virtually empty, hardly any cars. And yet North Korea maintains the world's fourth largest military. The North Korean regime's legitimacy is based on the almost godlike worship of its leaders. And some here wonder if Kim Jong-un knows where the myths stop and reality begins. Military exercises by U.S. and South Korean forces. A display of American F-22 stealth fighter jets. A U.S. Navy destroyer prepared to shoot down a North Korean missile if necessary. Overflights by B-2 stealth bombers and B-52s capable of carrying American nukes. An angry North Korea released an animation showing the planes being shot down. In fact, if you watch North Korean state TV, the country looks like it's at war. Pictures of U.S. soldiers used for target practice. Absolute leader Kim Jong-un says he's put North Korea's missiles at the ready, calling his nuclear weapons the nation's life. Secretary of Defense Hagel calls the North belligerent. Uh, it has ratcheted up uh, the danger. South Korea's president says she will respond to force with force. Pyongyang's secrecy makes the old Soviet Kremlin look transparent. North Korea appears to want to pick a fight, and the U.S. says if it comes to that, it is ready. Brian? And tonight, let's go to our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, in our D.C. newsroom. And Andrea, not to get flip about this, but the reason people on the west coast of the U.S. aren't heading to shelters and stocking up on water and canned goods is our calculated analysis that they don't have the delivery system beyond, what, a thousand miles? Exactly. And there's no sign yet of mobilization. That doesn't say, though, that they can't use these short-range nuclear weapons, which would be devastating to our allies, which would in, in inevitably get us into a war and would, of course, expose U.S. troops. Also, what's worrying is that they did take that step of shutting down that joint economic zone. That's $2 billion of shared trade across the border. Very important hard currency for the North, much more important to them than to the South. So far, our efforts through China have not worked out. Diplomacy hasn't worked out. And the real worry is proliferation eventually. As one South Korean leader, a ruling party leader said, and this gets to exactly to what Richard was talking about, he said, when the thug in your neighborhood gets a brand new machine gun, we can't defend our home with a stone. If they want nuclear weapons, if the Japanese do, we've got a serious arms race. And you're right, this has to be watched for any conflict that might draw in the U.S. Andrea Mitchell right. in our D.C. newsroom tonight. Andrea, thanks.